I'm Jesse, and today I'm going to do a vintage makeup test. Today I'm going to use the Cody Airspun Translucent Powder, and this powder has been around since the 1930s. Allow today's review to drift you back to the 1930s, when face powder was basically the most important type of makeup that there was. There were only a few other items other than powder, and everything you hear about when you think of Back in the day in the 30s, you don't think about, oh, that highlight on fleek. You think about people powdering their nose and that look of everything being perfectly powdered. Of course, just like now, all of the companies back in the 30s were racing to make the very best makeup and to come up with the very best gimmick or that hit product. A makeup company called Lady Esther launched a huge hullabaloo when they started this makeup campaign that included this idea called the bite test. And the bite test meant to take a little bit of your face powder, Bite down on it between your teeth, and if you felt any grit, it meant that your powder was not quality powder, it wasn't going to stay on your face a long time, and it wasn't finely milled, and it probably wasn't going to feel very good on your face either. Once they did this, all the makeup companies started freaking out because none of their products had ever been designed to pass this bite test, because it had never... Was that a go? Okay, back to this. Because this test had never been thought of before. So everyone was scrambling to make their powders as smooth as possible, and Cody was one of them. So their idea to make a powder that would always pass the bite test and that would just be soft as clouds is the Airspun Powder. Airspun Powder by Cody that we can still get today in stores, they decided that theirs was going to be the very best. It was going to be made with a new technology so that each particle would be micro-fine, it would have an airbrush look, and no other company could beat them. I'm reading a little bit about the technology on my iPad, so forgive me for not knowing it, but it's actually pretty complicated. So instead of a powder being ground um, physically with something hard against it, this powder is air spun. So I'll put some pictures from the old factory, which is still how this powder is made. Um, and maybe you can understand a little bit better. But basically it's made into a super fine and super evenly sized powder by these air powered micro ionizers or micronizers. So that's why this powder is so light and fluffy. It's actually spun that way with air. This is I think my first, well it's my first official one of these vintage product reviews, but I think it's super cool when there are products that people used back in the day that are still in production now and I think it's really neat to see how we would use them back then compared to now. So this is a powder that when it debuted it only cost around one dollar and it's still under ten dollars now. You can find it at any drugstore, I'll put the links in the info box below. One that I have is translucent because honestly whenever I buy powder I go for translucent because I just get afraid that I'm going to pick the wrong color because it's happened so many times. So the color I'm reviewing is translucent. I'm gonna get these bangs out of my way. I'll get going. All right, I'm gonna use this little bit smaller than usual powder brush. I saw some makeup artists doing this, and I tried it out, and I really like it because <clears throat> you can just get a little bit more targeted. It does give you a little bit more coverage, but I'm gonna start out pretty light and just see what it looks like just kind of setting things, and then I'll go in a little bit with more coverage and make it have like that vintage look. One thing I love about this powder is just how much there is because you just don't have to be careful with it, which sometimes when you first start out you might end up using a little bit too much like I have. But um, <clears throat> there's just so much and it's just really nice because you can, you can just really use what you need <clears throat> for the look. You don't have to worry about the powder costing like $40 for a tiny little jar. Looking at you, Laura Mercier, which I also love. I didn't really do my forehead. Um, I don't really powder my forehead. I tend to just use a little bit of bronzer to contour it, but I don't really powder it on just my everyday. I do use powder on my forehead to set everything if I'm doing more of a vintage look, 
But if you are somebody who is experimenting with wearing either foundation or face powder and you kind of feel like it's too much like a mask, just try leaving your forehead blank because if it matches your skin, it shouldn't look too different anyway. Or you can just do sort of like a light dusting like this because I find that if I take my foundation all the way up my forehead, I just feel like I'm walking around wearing a mask all day and it feels really weird. And whenever makeup artists do that to me, I always just feel super different and not like myself. So um, that's what I like to do. So I'm gonna go ahead and do the forehead right now to show you guys. All right, so this is about after two hours of being pretty moderately powdered. I wouldn't, powdered, I wouldn't say heavily powdered, but I have a little bit um, of glow to it, as you can see. I'll show you right there. Well, I have a little highlighter, but you can see it's settled in pretty well. The one thing I don't really love about the translucent color, and I'd like to try out some of the other colors and see what happens, but it's sort of, it is translucent and my skin, I have freckles from the sun or just different colored skin dapples from the sun. Um, and I like that, but when I cover it with powder, certain types of powder, it looks sort of like I am trying to smooth everything all out. And with this one, you, it doesn't give it that soft focus where everything is smoothed out and you don't see the different colors. You do see them, but it looks like I'm trying to hide them. So um, I hope that makes sense. Somebody who's experienced this probably uh, knows what I'm talking about. There is a scent to it. I'm not sure if they make a sensitive skin one or an unscented one, um, but it does have a fairly strong, compared to a more modern powder, um, a strong floral scent. I don't mind it, but I do have sensitive skin and sensitive skins should be wear. People who are sensitive to fragrance, it is pretty strongly fragrant. Some people will say it smells like a grandma. Anytime that you're checking out anything from the uh, vintage makeup section, you're definitely gonna have to be careful with the fragrance. So overall, my review on it is this. I like this powder and I'm glad that I have it. It's a huge container, so I'm probably never gonna have to rebuy it again because I'm never gonna get through it but I think it is helpful to have on hand. I kind of ran low on my other favorite powders, so it's always good to have something as a backup. It is a very good vintage powder. If you do looks and you want to have that powdered face look like I do right now, then go ahead and give it a try. It's a very good price. It's always under $10. You can sometimes find it if you're lucky during certain sales at the drugstore and such for like $3. Um, and it's very quality, it's very finely milled, as they described even back in the 30s. Um, it is soft as air, it's super fluffy, and there's a ton of product in there. So I think that that is really good. What I don't like about it is the way, the, it's just a very powdery <laughs> powder. Um, so basically if you're looking for something that is um, dewy or fresh or any of those kind of adjectives, don't go with this. This is definitely something to check out if you're interested in it for the vintage aspects, the pinup look aspects. I know that people also bake with it. I haven't tried that, so I think it probably is pretty good for that. Um, and you need to use a lot of powder for baking, so um, that could be good as well. But yeah, I think that it gives a beautiful look, sort of ethereal, powdery, very good for a Marilyn Monroe look or something like that. Um, not my favorite for pictures because I I think it does give my face sort of a white cast to it. Um, but yeah, let me know if you guys have any other questions. Thanks so much for watching this vintage makeup review, you guys. Make sure you leave down in the comments below if you've heard of any other products and you want me to check them out. I definitely am open to your suggestions. So please subscribe. I make new videos every week and I also post articles on my website, jessiesage.com. So I'll see you soon.